In section 6.1, we're going to talk about the technique of substitution as it pertains to integration. Earlier, we used integration, and what we dealt with was reversing the basic rules of derivatives. So we essentially found antiderivatives. By integrating, we found antiderivatives. Now, we had other more complex derivative rules, if you remember. The goal of this section is to reverse those more complex derivative rules. Here's what I mean by reversing our basic rules. If you recall, if you take f of x equals x to the seventh power, then the derivative of f of x would be 7x to the sixth. So our basic derivative rule said take the exponent out front and then lower the exponent by one. That translated to, if we want to find an antiderivative of 7x to the sixth power, I would raise the power by one, so I'd get x to the seventh, and then I would divide by that new power. Seven over seven is one. When I find, when I integrate, remember I've found an antiderivative, and then I'm going to find the entire class of antiderivatives by tacking on a plus c. So we reverse those basic rules by finding antiderivatives. We did this with polynomials. We did this with um, expressions like 1 over x. We did this exp with expressions like sine and cosine and secant tangent and tangent squared. Now we're going to take a look at a derivative rule which we dealt with earlier in the class. Namely, we're going to take a look at the chain rule. If you recall, the chain rule says, if I have a composition of two functions, we'll call the exterior function f and the interior function g. Sometimes I call this the inside function. If we want to take a derivative of the composition of f with g, we take a derivative of f with an input of our interior function. And then I have to multiply times the derivative of the interior function. Oftentimes, I call the interior function the inside function. Here's how that played out in a practical example. Let's assume I have a function. This is probably bad notation because I used lowercase f for both of these. I hope that doesn't throw you off too much. In this function, we have an inside function, which is 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. That inside function is all raised to the seventh power. When I take a derivative, because I know if I take something to the seventh power, I need to take the 7 out front and lower the exponent by 1, just like I did here. If I had x to the seventh, I'd take the seven out front and lower the exponent by one. The inside function stays the same. So I've taken the seven out front, lowered the exponent by one. And then after I've done that, I multiply that whole answer by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 is 6x minus 2. That was how the chain rule behaved. Now we want to reverse that. Now, in order to reverse the chain rule, it's going to be useful 
to relabel my inside function. We had g of x as the inside function. Let's just replace that with the letter u. This means that the chain rule can be written this way. If you want to take the derivative of f of u, I would take the derivative of f, the inside part would be normal u, and then I would multiply times u prime. So all I did was replace the g of x with the letter u. The reason I'm using the letter rule u is because that is usually what we do when we do substitution. We usually use that letter. If I integrate both sides, the integration and the derivative will essentially cancel each other out. You'll get f of u is equal to integrating f prime of u times u prime. This is the essence of substitution. We have an inside function and we have a derivative of our inside function to take care of. So that's what we do. We have an integration that we're trying to do and we replace an inside function, g of x, let's call it, with variable u. When I replace g of x with a variable u, I need to change from integrating with respect to x to integrating with respect to u. This is going to force a change in my differentials as well. In particular, g prime x dx is going to be equal to du. Let me explain what I mean by that. We have g of x is equal to u. Or maybe I should write this on the other side. u equals g of x. If I take a derivative of both sides with respect to x, well, one notation I can use is derivative of u with respect to x. The other notation I could use is the prime notation. I'll use that on the right. And so my change in u with respect to x is g prime. That means as far as the differentials go, the differentials are related to each other in this way. du is equal to g prime x dx. That's how we're going to deal with substitution. We're going to set u to be the inside function. We're going to figure out what the du dx exchange is. And then we're going to substitute in so that I'm integrating with respect to u. That's the basic idea of substitution. Those steps are hard to write down. So instead of writing down all of the steps of substitution, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on lots and lots of examples. Let's take a look at this example. We want to use substitution to integrate the following. Integrate 100 times the quantity 4x minus 3 raised to the sixth power with respect to x. The first thing we're going to have to do is identify the inside function. In this situation, it's pretty obvious that the inside function is 4x minus 3. If you don't see why, that polynomial is being raised to a high exponent. So this 4x minus 3 is my inside function. So I set up this integral, 
And then I let u be my inside function. Now, in this case, my inside function we said is 4x minus 3. The derivative of u with respect to x is just 4. The derivative of 4x minus 3 is just 4. That means if I want to exchange a du with a dx, I can do so by take, exchanging du for a 4 times dx. There's another way to see this as well. Because we just have a constant number, you could have also exchanged the dx for a 1 fourth times du. Either one of these exchanges is going to lead to the same result. Let me show you how to do each one of these exchanges. Notice that if I'm going the du equals 4dx, I really need a 4 paired up with my dx. I can't get that from the polynomial being raised to the sixth power, but I can factor out a 4 from 100. So what I would do is I would change that 100 to a 25 multiplied times 4. And I put the 4 all the way back at the end. So I can, when I substitute, I can substitute out the 4dx for the du. Now I am ready to substitute. Just like I said, u is the 4x to the minus 3. So in for the 4x minus 3, I'm going to replace that with just the letter u. 4 times dx, I'm going to replace that with a du. Now we have something that is just polynomial integration. We've switched our letter to u, so we're going to have to integrate this polynomial with respect to u. That means I want to find a class of all antiderivatives. This is our standard basic rule. We'd add 1 to the exponent and get u to the seventh, and then divide that coefficient of 25 by 7. At the end, I have to add on a plus c so that it covers all of my antiderivatives. The last step in solving this problem is rewriting this because we started with an expression written with x's, we want to end with an expression written with x's. So that means we back substitute. Instead of u to the seventh, we replace u with its version in x's, which is 4x minus 3. So instead of u to the seventh, I'm getting 4x minus 3 to the seventh plus c. If you would like to take a derivative of this, what would happen is the seven would come out front, cancel this. We'd take four x minus three to the sixth power, and then we multiply it times the derivative of the inside function, which is four. So we would have multiplied by seven and by four. If you do 25 over seven times seven, and then times four, you do get back 100, which is exactly what this expression was, 100, 4x minus 3 to the sixth. That's how substitution works at this level. Remember I said you could have also used one-fourth du equals dx is the substitution. If you go that route, then there's no need to factor 100. You can simply replace the 4x minus 3 
with the letter U. And then when I replace the DX, I'm going to replace that with one fourth DU. And you'll notice that one fourth multiplied times 100 is 25, which is the exact same expression we had earlier. Either way, you're going to end up with 25 u to the sixth integrated. So it's not a big deal whether you use this and you factor out a four, or if you just replace the dx with the one fourth du and then multiply it in. Let's do another example. We want to use substitution to integrate the following integral. We want the class of antiderivatives of 8x minus 20, quantity 8x minus 20, multiplied times quantity x squared minus 5x plus 18 to the 10th power. In this scenario, we have two polynomials. I would guess that the one that's being raised to the 10th power is the one we need. So let's go ahead and try to use substitution here. I'm telling you that the u we want to use is u equals x squared minus 5x plus 18 because that u is being raised to a 10th power. We set u equal x squared minus 5x plus 18. Then I take a derivative of both sides. du with respect to x is equal to 2x minus 5. That means I can insert a du as long as I have 2x minus 5 times dx. Again, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Notice I have the 8x minus 20 there. If I factored out a 4, I'd end up with 2x minus 5. That's the way I'm going to do that. I'm going to factor it out. This is not the only way you could have done it. You could have also multiplied both sides here by 4. And if I multiply both sides by 4, I conveniently get the 8x minus 20 when I distribute this in. I'll use factoring, but if you would rather have integrated with a 4 du, that's fine as well. Since I'm going to factor, I'm going to factor the 8x minus 20. Factor out a 4, and you get 2x minus 5. I'm going to place that 2x minus 5 next to the dx so that I can see that it's paired. Now I can do my substitution. u is the x squared minus 5x plus 18. Notice that means that this first part becomes 4 times u to the 10th. And this second part, the 2x minus 5 times dx, that can all get replaced with a du. This is just a polynomial with respect to the letter u. Since we're going to be integrating that, I can think back to my basic antiderivative rules. My basic antiderivative rules said raise the exponent by 1, then divide by that new exponent. Note that this du just stands for the differential, and that's just telling you what you're integrating with respect to. I don't have to do anything extra with the du after I've integrated. As you can see, we get 4 elevenths times u to the 11th power plus c. And that's how you would do substitution.
I would like you to try substitution on your own with this problem. Go ahead, push pause on the video. Try to integrate using substitution here. 